Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm most inshallah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah. Sheikhna, in previous discussions, we'll be discussing Salah, we'll be discussing the different types of Salah, Salah in Jama'ah, uh, the Salah of Eid, the Salah of Jummah. Let's put our attention to Salah al Ayat. Now, ayat meaning signs. Uh, what are these signs, and and what is this salah? Is it is it wajib to perform or not? A'udhu billah as-sami' al-alim min al-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi. Now, salat al-ayat is the salah for the signs in which appear. Um, in this world, there are natural disasters. There are some strange signs that occurs. Um, for example, there are four types of signs in which, if they took place, the mu'min and the mu'mina must, as obligatory, as wajib, to perform salat al-ayat for those uh, signs. Um, the first event and sign is the sun eclipse. So even the partial and uh, no one fears of it, still you have to uh, perform the Salat al-Ayat. So sun eclipse is the first one. The second one is the moon eclipse. Again, even the partial, just part of the moon, you still have to pray uh, Salat al-Ayat, even if nobody fears. The third one is the earthquake that happens within seconds or minutes, again, um, even if there's no fear, because sometimes um, so very minor earthquake it's case. not really that strong. Uh, it's just a few seconds and minor earthquake. In this case, you still have to pray the Salat of Ayat, which is wajib. And the fourth one that the Sayyid mentions are thunder, lightning, uh, thunderbolt, uh, fierce black and red winds and such like of most people that fear them. The fourth one, yes, if you fear them, then you basically have to uh, perform Salat al-Ayat in this case. MashaAllah, Shaykhna. Shaykhna, how does one perform Salat al-Ayat? Um, is it the same as our normal prayers or is there something very special and unique about the prayer? Salat al-Ayat uh, slightly different than other prayers and salah that we perform, either wajib or mustahab. There are two procedures and uh, methods in which the one can pray and offer uh, salat al-ayat. The first way is to actually uh, pray, it's only two rak'ah, to pray in each rak'ah, hamd and surah, five times. In, okay. in other words, um, in the first rak'ah, you, you read hamd and full surah, and you go to rukur. Then you stand up, and this is the longest version. This, this is the, the one, the prolonged salah of the ayat. So in the first rak'ah, hamd and surah, and then you go to rukur. Then you stand up, again, you read hamd and surah, full surah. When you finish the surah, you go again to uh, the rukur, and five times, of course. For the second rak'ah, exactly the same thing. Again, you read the uh, Hamd and Surah five times by uh, going to the Ruku'ah. Okay, so, so Hamd and Surah, Ruku'ah. Splitting you stand up, up with the Ruku'ah. Exactly, five so times. So we're looking at five times Alhamd and Surah and five Ruku as well. Exactly. And we recite the, the dhikr of the Ruku'ah, Subhana Rabbi al Adheem. Exactly. Each time and exactly. then get up. You stand up. Surah. Again, uh, Hamd and Fatiha, Surah. And then Okay. That's the longest version for, for this salah. There's a shorter version uh, for salat al-ayat, which most people would pray it and prefer it, is to bring a five uh, ayah uh, surah. For example, okay. surah al-ikhlas, tawheed. 
So you start initially uh, with the first rak'ah, you read the hamd, and then you break Surah Al-Ikhlas or Surah Al-Tawheed in five rak'ah, okay. ruku'ah. So first you finish the hamd recitation, and then you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, you go to the ruku'ah. Okay. You stand up again, and you say, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, you go to the ruku'ah. No hamd this time? No. Okay. You just break the same small surah into five ayat in five ruku'ah. Yeah. And then again, Allahu Samad, you go to the ruku'ah, you stand up again, Lam yalid wa lam yulad, ruku'ah. You stand up, wa lam yakun lahu kufu wa ahad, ruku'ah. And then you go to the sujood afterwards. Okay. The same applies to the second rak'ah. Again, you break this five ayat of this particular surah, the short surah. Um, in five rakur, and of course, uh, in the second uh, rak'ah, when you finish the last ayah of the surah, you don't go to rakur, you do the taqnut, yes. you do the qunut, and then you go to rakur and then sujood, and you end the oh, okay. uh, salat al ayat in this way. That's the shortest version of the salat al ayat, which is uh, easier and most would prefer. More feasible, yes, indeed. Shaykhna, this is a wajib salah. So, is there a qada for this? Qada for this salah is when the individual misses the um, the signs when it's occurred in that specific time, in that an hour and a half, let's say the sun or the moon eclipse. If somebody missed that full moon eclipse, the full moon, then they have to do the qada afterwards. Let's okay. say it happened in the middle of the night and you were asleep. So you woke up in the morning and they tell you, well, there at 3 a.m. there was an yeah. eclipse uh -huh. for an hour and a half and you missed it. Mm -hmm. In this case, if it's a full eclipse, full moon eclipse, in this case, you have to do the qada. If it's partial, there's no mandatory and wajib to do the qada. Okay, that's with the lunar eclipse only. E exactly. And what about if there's an earthquake or if there was a tornado? Surely you can't pray at the time when the actual disaster is happening. Exactly, for earthquakes and such like, if you couldn't do it immediately and pray while the earthquake was happening, in this case, um, you have to do them afterwards, after the earthquake and such like. And you do them as ada, not qada. There's no qada for it. You do as ada. Okay. So that's fine. You can just pray afterwards after they, uh, this uh, event uh, took place and, and finished. You start praying straight away after uh, these. Uh, so there's, causes. Th there's nothing like you know you can go to sleep and the next day you could pray or you know two three days later you pray within. You, you pray afterwards exactly okay, as soon as after the can, event. After yeah. the event. And what about um, this salah? Can we pray it in Jama'ah? Is that okay? Is that? Salatul Ayat, yes, because it's wajib, don't forget, it's not mustahab. Yes. The only exception to mustahab jama'ah, as we mentioned, is Salatul Eid al-Fatr and Adha. And Al-Ghadir that I said also adds uh, recently. Um, with regard to Salatul Ayat, because it's wajib, then you can pray in jama'ah as well. So you go to the mosque uh, in the time of the full, let's say, the, the moon eclipse, for example. Partial or full, doesn't make a difference. And then you go there and you pray with the jama'ah. And exactly the same way. The imam would go five times in ruku' by dividing the ayah, which is easier, uh, in five um, segments. And then you finish the jama'ah with the imam. That's fine. Or you can do it yourself at home, uh, for ada individually. That's also accepted. Sheikh, we live in a world where natural disasters happen quite frequently and all over the world. Now, we're here in London, and there may be an earthquake in, you know, as close as Spain or France. Um, the earthquake doesn't affect us. Do we have to pray Salat al-Ayat? Salat al-Ayat becomes wajib upon the individual if they witness uh, those signs in their own regions and areas. So if, if I don't see uh, the eclipse in my own country or my region, then there's no wujub. It only happens if it happens in my own uh, location. 
and surroundings. Otherwise, if, if it happens only, let's say, in North Africa or um, in the uh, southern of Europe, for example, and we never see it in here in the UK, then there's no point of, for us to pray Salat al-Ayat. It becomes wajib. It's only for them becomes wajib. For those who witness and see and feel the earthquake or the thunder or the eclipse and so forth. Otherwise, if we see it, we witness it, then it becomes wajib on us to pray Salat al-Ayat. Mm, I God forbid this happens, but what if there's more than one uh, tragedy? What if there is an earthquake and a tornado and uh, a solar eclipse at the same time? Um, once everything has been settled, do we pray one salah or do we pray uh, um, a salah prescribed for each of the different natural disasters that occurred? Because each event is different and they happened, let's say, each uh, in different times or even at the same time, let's say, because they, ha they are each, you're obliged to offer salat ayat for that particular sign and ayah, then you must make sure that you pray each salah for that particular event. So let's say you have an earthquake and eclipse. You have to pray twice, for the earthquake and for the eclipse, each separately. So you just repeat them again, twice, for each event. It doesn't be like that you have to pray one salah for the whole event, no. Each ayah becomes wajib upon the individual to perform salat ayat for that particular event. And then, when you finish, you've done your wajib, and it should be sufficient. Is it mustahab in the prayer to recite Surah Zalzala, considering it was like a natural event? Is there any prescribed Surah, or do you think just pray anything that makes the prayer easy for you? As mentioned, I mean, you have the right to choose any Surah um, in, in the Qur'an, Holy Qur'an, uh, and, and you actually um, recite that Surah in the Qur'an. That's fine, from the Qur'an, of course. and. Um, for the ones with five rak'ah, if you want to split, then you choose a, a surah with five ayat, ayat. like Qul Allah mm -hmm. for example. And you split that in five ruku'ah, uh, yes. in five ruku'ah. So before you go to the ruku'ah, you recite one verse, as mentioned in the beginning, and then you go to the ruku'ah. So you can break them up. So that's fine. I mean, you can choose any uh, ayat or, or any surah you want from the Holy Quran. What if one argues that um, you know, I didn't really feel the fear of the natural disaster or, you know, uh, it was very, very minor. Do we still have to pray the, pray the Salah or is it only when you feel really, really fear, when it's a very severe um, natural disaster? With regard to the sun eclipse and the moon eclipse and the earthquake, be it uh, there is fear or there's no fear, you have to pray it. Even if there is a minor eclipse or minor earthquake, or even you didn't feel it, you're at home sitting watching TV, and somebody called you that there's a you know earthquake, and you, you never felt it, because that event that sign took place, uh, you must perform the salah of ayat. It becomes wajib. It doesn't matter. There's no fear. There's nothing at all that makes you fear. Some even get excited. They go yes. to the hills and they watch. <laughs> the, you know, the yeah. sun eclipse or the moon eclipse. They enjoy it and instead of fearing. No, the, there's no issue with regard to fearing or not fearing. But with regard to the thunder and lighting and thunderbolt and the, the black and white um, and red winds, for such uh, events, if most people fear it, of course, if most people fear, as the mention says, said here, if the most people fear, then the salah becomes wajib. If it's just a minor red wind, it happens in, for example, in Iraq, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Syria as well, in Arabia as well, there's a red um, wind, and sometimes in some occasions happens, or even black winds, because they have, they have Sahara and deserts. Yes. If it's minor, then that people are used to it. That's not, there's no salah wajib for it, but if it becomes severe in, in, in which that most people fear it, 
you know, sometimes kids fear it. That's not the sign for that the salah becomes wajib. It has to be in the majority of people who should fear that sign, that um, thunder, for example, or the lightning. Also, some people would fear it you know, with, with weak hearts, you know, the elderly maybe, the kids. But it should be uh, feared by the majority of the people. Then if this happens, then uh, the salah would be wajib. The salat ayat would be wajib upon people to perform it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Now, and thank you to all of you for joining us. Inshallah, you guys stay safe and you do not fear the natural weathers that we have. Uh, but if you do, then make sure you pray your salah and remember us in your dua, inshallah. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, 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 ah.